In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the propellers for whirly gigs. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is just explain the various component parts because I'm going to treat them all separately and do a video on each one. Uh, first of all, you've got the the tailpiece or sail on the end, which gives it the direction in the wind. Then you've got the character itself um, with some movement. It could be a horse or a man or whatever. You've got the brackets and the mechanism with the cam that controls it. You've got the propeller, of course, which we're going to do next. Then you've got the actual pole or the method of fixing and the method of fixing it onto the whirly gig like at this. And I'll use various methods and I'm going to treat all these separately. But to start with, we're going to concentrate on the fan part, the propeller, like this. So what we'll do, I'll take this out of the way and then I'll get all the propeller bits out and I'll start to show you how to make the propeller. This is the first propeller I ever made. Uh, it's entirely made of wood. A uh, little cross piece there. There's a Meccano bush wheel screwed on which is fitted to the, the drive shaft. Uh, the problem with this, um, it is very, very efficient, far too efficient in fact. My first Whirly Gig um, had two chickens on it pecking at some corn on the base and this was the fan that powered it and it was so powerful the thing used to go around at a tremendous speed and eventually the chickens took off and flew away, landed on the floor and smashed. So the next Whirly Gig I made I decided to do something different. I kept that one because it seemed a shame to throw it away. But what I do now is I make my fans or propellers out of a wooden uh, central block or a hub and a, and a metal blade. There's a, a three bladed one. I experimented with different number of blades to see how they work. That's a three bladed one and that works quite well with some some smaller whirly gigs when you don't need too much power. This one's a, a five blader um, this is a, a four blader but with a square hub and this one's another three blader but this one's got a triangular hub now it doesn't make any difference what shape the hub is you can have it any shape really it doesn't have to be precise either as long as it's fairly well balanced it'll work okay I quite like making these propellers in fact I made quite a few um, so I got some spare ones and I can try different ones on the whirly gigs as I'm using them that's one I made with some I put some yellow tips on the end with blue, I thought that was quite nice. And then you've got this one. This is the real McCoy. I've had actually not found a use for this one. It's a nine blader. I made it just to see if I could really, but I might try it one day when I make a bigger whirly gig. It might be too powerful though, I reckon. Um, now I'm just going to show how the, how the blades are made up. First of all, you start with a, a central hub. Um, like these are some I've already made ready. Various shapes. That one's a softwood one. I wouldn't recommend that. Unless you're stuck and haven't got anything else. It's better to use hardwood if you can. That's a bit of ash. That's oak. I don't know what that is. Um, looks like a... I don't know. It's some sort of... It looks like oak. Well, I'm not sure it is or not. I can't remember. And, and that one's a bit of ash. Uh, where I get this from is just offcuts. Um, for example, this is a bit of an old chair, that's a bit of oak, and most people would chuck it in the bin or chuck it on the fire, but if you make whirly gigs and things, and especially if you're a scrimper, you're going to keep bits like that, because they always come in handy. This is a, a little piece of ash. I found this in a, in a scrap bin, actually. I was cycling past one day, and I saw a bin full of wood, and there was quite a few of these pieces, offcuts of ash, and I thought, well, I'll have them. So I took some home, and uh, they're ideal for cutting these blanks out for the whirly gigs. What I do, I start off, you probably can't see it very clearly on there, but I mark out the shape with a compass. Um, I won't go into all the details because it's quite easy to work out. There's one partially done. On that one I've cut the slots in it and, and marked it out, but I haven't actually cut it out yet. Uh, the slots I cut at an angle. Uh, don't ask me all the technicalities of it because there's nothing scientific in it. I've just made them and they work. I'm, I'm not an aeronautical engineer or anything, I haven't got a clue which way you should are supposed to make them but I just did it by trial and error and they just seem to work so that's good enough for me but any aviation experts would probably say well that's all wrong and they're not going to be efficient but they do work fine basically all I do I found it's easier to cut the slots in before you cut them round 
Uh, I've done them on a bandsaw, but don't worry, if you haven't got a bandsaw, you can stick them in the vise and do it by hand with a little tenon saw, anything. You don't need any special tools to make whirly gigs. You know, I've got machines and things that I use and it makes it quicker, but you can do it perfectly all right with hand tools. So there's no need to go and buy expensive equipment. You don't need it. And you can make them fairly simple. So what I do, I, I cut the, the block out like it is, square. Then uh, marked out obviously, and you need a centre point in it. Uh, I then put the bandsaw table on an angle, whatever angle I want, and just saw the slots in up to a mark I put on there all the way round. Having done that, the next step is to cut it out. Again, you don't need any expensive machines to do that. Uh, I, I personally use a fret saw or scroll saw because I happen to have them and, and it's one of the things I do. But you can use a coping saw. I don't know if you know what a coping saw is, but I'll just show you in case. I've got one here. This is a little coping saw. You can get these quite cheap. Um, I say I cut mine out with a fret saw, but you can use one of these if you want. Or an actual hand fret saw. Or if you don't want to do that and, and you really are not very good at cutting circles out, because it can be fiddly, just make a square one like that. It works perfectly all right. Or if you really want to be adventurous, a triangular one. But those are fiddly, I find, and there's no point to it really. So you're better off doing a square one or a circular one, I think. Um, once you've done the block, you've got to make sure you have a hole through the centre for the axle rod or the drive shaft to go through, or where you put your little bush on to drive it. Um, it's best not to do, drill that out until you've actually cut, you know, finished cutting the, the round bit out, I think. But make sure you mark it in the centre before you uh, cut it all out, because it's much easier if it's marked. Um, having said that, the next thing is the blades. Now, for my blades, I just use, as I mentioned in the first video, a bit of old scrap tin. This is a piece of a, a shelving unit. It's, it's a bit rusty. I've just scraped it off a bit. And you can see, hopefully, you can see where I've marked it out. I'll just zoom in. I don't know whether that makes it any clearer or not. You can see the markings. I've just drawn it out roughly. Again, they're not precise. I mean, I'm not saying this is the right way of doing it. It, it works okay. Um, what, all I do then, I just get a pair of, a simple pair of tin snips. And I just cut them off like this. It's only scrap metal, it doesn't matter. Just cut them off and trim the end there. So, so you can get these tin snips quite cheaply, they're available quite widely. Um, trim the ends off. You can use some round circular snips if you've got just to cut the corners, but if not, just leave them flat, it wouldn't matter. So that's the first one cut out. Um, you have to be careful when you're doing this because the edges tend to be very sharp when you've cut them. So what I do is, is go off it, over it with a file quickly or a bit of rough um, coarse sandpaper or whatever just to get the sharp edges off else you'll cut yourself. I won't do any more of those because it's pretty obvious what you do, you just cut them out. I always make a few, a few and store them. These are some I've already made earlier. See so these for example, you'll see they got letters on them. Actually it says Philips because it was a part of an old DVD player. Again, being a scrimper, I don't chuck anything away, sheets of metal and that. If I scrap an old DVD player or somebody gives me one they don't want anymore, what I do is I take it apart and any useful bits I stick them in the shed for just such an occasion. So the, these that letter won't matter on there. When it's painted you won't even see it and it's perfectly usable. What I've done, you'll see a, a little mark on these. Again, that's only a little thing of mine. It's because I've shaped them a certain way, and when you put them in your in your your fat your block, you want to make sure they're in the same way because they're shaped slightly differently. You see, so I've just put a little marker, a punched a little mark on there, so I know you can just draw it with a felt tip pen. It doesn't matter. You see the same on there. I'll put a little mark on there, so that when I put them in the block, I know I'll get them in the correct position. Now, when you're fitting them in the block, again, this is only one of my ideas. Um, it's probably not the best way of doing it. What I actually do, I put them in the block like that. Um, then I just bend that over. I'll put them on a vise and just tap them over. First on that side, and then on that side. But be careful which way you do it, because um, you're going to put a little nail in there. You don't have to. You could glue them in if you wanted. But what I do, I just shove them in. And then I put a little nail in to hold them. So uh, what I'll do, I'll show you one I've done already completed to say going through all that again. This is one that I've just nailed in, but I haven't painted it or anything. That's just a little block there. As you can see, I've bent the 
the edges over like so and then I put a little nail in. When you're doing this and you're putting the nail in it is best to drill a hole using a little tiny drill first to take the nail because otherwise it will split and uh, the wood will split where you put it in and just to prove it I've got one here that did just that I was a bit ambitious I tried doing it without the drilling and you can see what's happened where I put the, it looked okay, but where I put the nail in, it just split the widow wood open. But that was a bit of soft wood anyway, so um, as I say, it's not as good as the hardwood. But if you put a, a little drill in first, it does help. So beware of that. I only kept that just to illustrate how you can go wrong with it. Um, once, you, once you've done that, uh, the next thing I do is I get a, get a bit of acrylic um, undercoat paint. Uh, white paint and I just like this on here and I just put a bit of that on just to prime the wood around there and then let that dry off and then sometimes I think it's a good idea but you don't have to do it I'll get some um, some of this like no more nails or filler the acrylic filler in a in a gun and poke some in the little gaps there just press it in just to seal the little holes up because you're going to put these out in all weathers and the rain will tend to get in and, and it will spoil the paintwork so if you just shove something in there, you don't have to do this, I didn't used to do it but I, I find it's better now to do that just squirrel a bit on uh, with when, when the, um, I'll show you what I mean because I can't think what they call them now I've got one here somewhere like one of these I just use one of these with it, that's a bit of um, cheapo high power adhesive and all I do, I just get a little bit out on my finger like that, and then I just press it into the into the gaps on my finger, or you can use a little screwdriver or something like that. It's just basically it, it it just seals it off and fills the holes in. Again, as I say, you don't have to do that, but I think it's better because it stops the water getting in. But make sure it's waterproof, you know, exterior filler or or exterior high power adhesive as the case might be otherwise you'll have problems. I say when I've done that and you put some undercoat on it then all you've got to do really is just give it a coat of paint and I, I use any old paint that I happen to have as, as you can see these are some red paint it's just ordinary red oil based paint that was left over from another job and I use red, blue, yellow, whatever colour I've got. Um, it's entirely up to you, it's just some old paint I've got. And, and you, you, it does take quite a long time to dry. And I usually put a couple of coats on. And um, when that's dried out thoroughly, I then give it a couple of coats of yacht varnish. Um, two coats usually, to, to just to seal it all in, just to make absolutely sure. And I find that and leave it quite a while. It takes several days to really dry properly. And then it's a simple matter of, of making a little bush or something to fit on there. And I'll just show you what I do for that. Uh, I've got one here. This is, a, this is just a simple Meccano wheel. I've actually drilled three holes in there. Um, and I just put, a, put it on there. You um, need a little axle rod. If you put your axle rod in, in there and into that, into the hole you've drilled, that'll make sure it's central. And then it's a simple matter of drilling a couple of small holes in there and putting some wood screws in, or self-tappers, it doesn't matter what, just to hold that bush wheel, that little wheel to there. Then you can attach it, this is just, you can take that out, and then you can attach it straight onto your whirly gig. Um, like there's one there already done, you see, with three little screws in. Uh, you, you don't, again, you don't have to use that. You could glue it straight onto the shaft if you wanted. There's all sorts of ways of doing it. But uh, basically, that's, that's about it for making the propellers. If anybody has any questions about it, I'll be happy to, to um, try and help if I can. But like I said at the beginning, it's not a scientific thing. They do work well. Uh, and I've no idea, there's probably a better way of doing it. I don't know anything about the angles or anything. I just make them and they work. But any suggestions are always welcome. Anyway, in the next part, um, I think we'll discuss the, the, um, the sail, the, the, the bit on the end that turns it into the wind. Okay, bye.